Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Michael Loya. You are tuned in to Mr. Entertainer Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting American Hearts Radio Entertainment Network. We got a lot of big things coming up in the future. God's showing me a lot of a lot of different avenues and platforms to where we can reach millions and millions of people and inspire them and bring them closer to the love of God through the universal language of entertainment. Entertainment, everybody loves to be entertained. To me, real life is the true entertainment. Watching people change their lives and watching people that are broken have a renewal of their spirit and go on to become successful citizens in our communities. And uh, here at Hands and Feet Foundation, I, I witness that on a daily basis and it's very humbling to me. And uh, I've been going through a lot myself and uh, I gotta tell you, if you're walking the faith walk, your faith will be tested. And it's up to you as an individual to focus on what God has in store for you. Each of us have our own journeys in life and each of us tend to stray into different directions. But if you focus your heart, your mind, on what you feel God is doing inside you, he will guide you and provide for you as long as you are sincere to yourself, to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust me, you know, I, I don't believe in religion. I believe in the teachings of Christ. And he teaches us to love each other. And God tells us not to worry about anything, but to pray about everything. And he's got you. And I know everybody goes through tragedies in their life. And tragedy is a tough thing. When you feel an emptiness inside your heart, an emptiness through grief, loss, tragedy, divorce, something happened that puts that emptiness inside your heart. That is the heaviest, heaviest burden to bear. And God tells us to give him all of your burdens. We may not understand a lot of things that happens to us in this life, but one thing we need to understand is that God loves us and Jesus loves us and we are going to face things in our life that we never imagined so I just want to say this is God's show you're in his movie there's going to be people that come in and out of this world Life and death go hand in hand. You're born and then you die. Talks about it in the Bible. There's a time for everything. But Jesus spoke about his departure from this world. And I like that. Being born is an arrival into this world and we are born into a spiritual battle which we cannot see but we see it everywhere through other people and through the corruption and through the craziness and insanity and lunacy that happens in this world and the evil and that is just as real as God's love so whenever you feel alone you remember 
and God is always with you. And when you depart from this world, remember Jesus is there to hold you. And I believe that they should teach our children that. And maybe grieving wouldn't be so hard to deal with because it's beyond understanding sometimes. Anyway, I've got a great guest for you tonight. He's my brother in Christ. I met him right here at the Hands of Pete Foundation. His name's Kent. He's a great guy, and he's got a heck of a testimony and a heck of a story. You're going to meet Kent right after these messages from Hands and Feet Foundation, my brother Johnny Van Zandt with Leonard Skinner, and also the Haven Horse Ranch. They're helping a lot of children, man, cope with a lot of things. God bless you. See you in a minute. Rock and roll. Hi, it's Rich Norton. I am a board member for the Haven Horse Ranch in St. Augustine, Florida. This is a wonderful ministry that specializes in equine therapy for special needs children. What an amazing ministry. If you'd like to support this ministry, go to havenhorseranch.org, havenhorseranch.org in St. Augustine, Florida, and you will bless somebody and you'll get blessed yourself. Appreciate you doing that. God bless. Hey everybody, Johnny Van Zandt from Leonard Skinner here with the sign of hands and feet. We want you to go out and donate. We want you to go see them. God bless each and every one of you. Support, support, support. Amen. Amen. Hey everybody, Johnny Van Zandt here from Skinner. Hey, I want you to donate to the hands and feet. West side. West side is the best side. There you go. That's where I was born at. Anyway, hey, listen, they're feeding homeless vets. Uh, homeless people, helping people recover. They're a good organization. Don't forget, donate to the hands and feet West Side. God bless. Hello, everybody. I'm Amy Gandy from Hands and Feet Foundation. It is a nonprofit organization, 501c3, that my husband and I started four years ago. What we do is we feed the least of these. We help the least of these in our community and everywhere else if they want to come. We have hot meals every day from 1230 to 2. After we eat, we have a Bible study every day. We have clothes, food. Once a month we have free doctors, free psychiatrists, a free optometrist, dentists, and these are real licensed practitioners. And we have haircuts on Mondays. We help people get into rehab and detox from drug addiction, life on the street, where they need help. We have homeless shelters that we facilitate with that if they want to get off the street, we help homeless veterans get off the street because there's no reason they should be out. And how we do all this, we do it for free from donations, volunteers, and from people like y'all. We would like for you to look us up on Facebook, Hands and Feet Westside. We'd like for you to look at our website, handsandfeetfoundation.org. Our address is 7478 103rd Street, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. The Bible says that when you have done unto the least of these, you have done unto me. Thank you. Hey everybody, go to handsandfeetfoundation.org and support them. Don't forget, support, support, support. For the Son of Man who came to seek and save the lost. Luke 19.10. Hi, Rich Norton with Retriever Merchant Solutions. I have great news for you today. Many of you have asked about a sales opportunity with our company. The great news is, yes, we definitely do have opportunities. If you're a go-getter, you like meeting people, and you're interested in a position where you can earn residual income, which means make money while you sleep and great commissions up front, that's what we have here. If you're looking for an opportunity rather than a job, call me at 904-434-4635, or you can email me at opportunity.rps at gmail.com. Look forward to hearing from you. We will teach you. We will train you to become successful. Hey, everybody. We're back. This is Kent Weaver. Nice to see you, Mike. Kent, great to see you, brother. Amen. Kent, uh, he's got a heck of a story. Um, he used to own... Weaver Television Repair here locally 
few years back, and I remember that. And television repair is, I don't even know if there's any little mom and pop television repair shops around anymore. No, there aren't, aren't they all closed? They're a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. You know, technology, you know, is moving at such a rapid pace these days. It's just unbelievable, man. They're getting into holographic imagery, having rock concerts with holographic imagery where the people look exactly like, you know, like Roy Orbison. Mm -hmm. Elvis. It's amazing where the technology's going. But old televisions and radios and stuff, man, everything's on your phone now. Exactly, exactly. And uh, Kent's story is uh, Kent's homeless, but he's homeless by choice. Now, 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 wrap your head around this. Who, who in their right mind would want to be homeless by choice? He's got a very good reason why. And it's been very rewarding to you, hasn't it? Yes, it has. I'm happier and more content than I've ever been in my life because I'm truly serving Jesus and God. You're out there on the front lines. Yes, yes. Take us back to when, uh, when you had your TV shop and... Uh, some things happened that pretty much changed your life and took you in a whole different course. Exactly. Well, what happened was in December of 2013, I cried out to God because I knew he did not want me repairing TVs anymore and I wanted to go out and serve him. But I said to God, God, how are you going to get me away from all this? And I did the same thing at home. Well, I used to repair, I had like 125 antique radios. I would work on radios in what I used to call the radio room, repair those at home. During the day, I was working on TVs all day. Well, what happened was, God let black mold move into my house and my business at the same time. Black mold. Correct. Black mold. It was behind the walls and everything. Yes. It was in the ceiling. It was in the den. It was right. It was actually at the business. It was coming out from underneath the foundation. Wow. And How did you find out about that? Well, not until later when I, uh, oh, it was earlier this year when I bought a, no, in December of this year, sorry, I bought a filter from. Uh, last year. Yeah, last year. Sorry about that. That. I bought a filter from an online place that advertised cleaning up black mold, and when I ran the filter in the office or in the business, it would be so black that it was full of black mold, and also the air that hit the wall, it looked like black spray paint was pr sprayed on the wall. That's how full of black mold it was. And what did it do to you? Well, it killed the right side of my brain. I could not see out of my right eye. I could not hear out of my right ear. I got deathly sick. I lost 35 pounds, 40 pounds. And it, God told me that this was going to happen. It ha I moved, I started living in my van in July of 2014. That's when God told me it was going to I was going to go through this for four years. Now, I had money, but living in your van, living in a hotel room, your money does not last long. And what happened was in... You had no work because, exactly. because you shut down your shop. Exactly. Exactly. I had no way to make any money, and I was too sick to even think about it. And then... I had money and I was, I, I was able to feed myself and everything, but then I ran out of everything. I was leave, living in my van on the Burger King parking lot of Landing. And in Luke 12, uh, let's see, 12, 24, it says, Consider the ravens, for they, not, for they neither sow not reap, neither do they have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the raven, than the fowls? Well, I used that scripture to test God because I was starving and had no money. The next day, the people at Burger King started bringing me food. So I was being fed by the word of God. And then in the last week of August is when I had other financial problems. And I came here to hands and feet July 1st. And Pastor James was given the scripture and he used the exact... I, I remember that day. I met you. It was your first day here. Mm-hmm. And... God told me I'd be going through this for four years, and July 1st is when Pastor James read the exact same scripture back to me. Hmm. And that's when I knew it was over. And since then, I've recommitted myself to Jesus. I be, have a closer walk with Him. Uh, my faith has grown. Uh, I'm just you're so much happier and content. You're still living in your van. Yes, sir. Yep, I'm still living in my van. But see, I, wanted to be, I got saved when I was 14. So I was raised Methodist. And I was president of the MIF all through high school, but I really wanted to become a preacher. Well, this is my childhood dream coming true. It took God 52 years to get me where he wants me to be. 
and now I'm able, able to preach the word, read the word, witness to people, and it's just so rewarding. And Jesus and God keep bringing me the same scripture to me. Well, this is, you know, the hands and feet is not like uh, traditional churches. No, it's not. At all. Explain to people really the, the reality of what hands and feet is. Well, it boils down to the same scripture Jesus says, They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. This place, their heart is so close to Jesus. You can see it, feel it. And they feed the homeless. They feed the word to them. They close the homeless. Fellowship it, every day. Fellowship every day. Yes, that's a big thing. None of the preachers are doing. The no. Big churches are it's either Sunday or Wednesday. They're not out there feeding people on the street. In exactly. The, in the middle of the day, between mm -hmm. noon and two every day, and giving the word. And they give out clothes, mm -hmm. and they have uh, medical people come here. They got getting people into housing, mm -hmm. getting addicts into rehab. I mean, it's truly life changing. And you know, I never thought that I would be actually involved with any kind of ministry in my life. But a sweetheart, which is in heaven right now, Brittany, had led me here, and it's been a blessing to us as well and uh, you know watching lives transform is, is just unbelievable it is and uh, what do you see what has hands and feet actually done for you spiritually has it given you strength understanding about what your purpose is exactly yes it has it showed me that when I came here July 1st I knew I was home this is the place where God placed me to be my mission field and it's all because of one thing. They're so close to Jesus. And that's what the main main emphasis, emphasis of this place is. And you have to show love to everybody. Love is the greatest commandment. And there's a lot of lost people out here. A lot of homeless people we have uh, mm -hmm. lunch with every day. Yeah. A lot of people that are down and out, that are disabled. Uh, a lot of addicts. A lot of veterans. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... Uh, Homelessness affects, it doesn't discriminate. No, it doesn't. And it can happen to anybody for unbelievable reasons. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, nobody would think that somebody would choose to be homeless, but it saved your life. Oh, yes, it did. It did. And that's uh, mind-blowing. Yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? But I did it by choice. Because I had one choice, either keep the stuff I had and get sick and die, or walk away from everything and live. Well, I always choose life, because Jesus Amen. Christ is life. And what's, uh, I know, you know, I was here with Kent the other day, we were having uh, lunch and Bible study, and there was a gentleman that uh, comes around, and he was, uh, you know, some people have their own twisted beliefs about a lot of things, mm -hmm. about God and different religions and who they think they are. And tell a little bit about what this guy was saying. Well, he was disillusional and he was being deceived by demons. But the main thing is he said he was Satan at one time, then he said he was wow. Christ. And again, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but evil spirits and wickedness in high places. That will attack people's minds. Mm -hmm. And what was the final outcome of the conversation that, that you were having with him? It really could not be resolved because he did not want to listen and open his mind. Did he get upset? A little bit. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But see, that's the way the world is because when you tell them about Jesus, they have no cloak for their sin and they can't stand admitting the truth. That's so true. A lot of people can't handle the truth and the reality of, of what what it's all about. You know, Jesus says he is the truth, the life, and the way. And from experience, it's it's real. It's real. And it is. you know, I don't know. Since I've been coming here, it is con completely transform my life and I know it has for you in a lot of ways give some people some examples of how it has transformed you 
Well, it's been basically just a faith walk. It taught me to rely on God through faith, not through my own works. And it has just strengthened me spiritually. I've been blessed by this place. The fellowship here is wonderful. You meet many people and you get a chance to witness to them, but many people are deceived out there. And it's a sad thing. And the most important scripture that God keeps bringing to my mind is they honor Jesus. They honor Jesus is honored with their lips, but not with their heart. And their heart is far from them. And the closer your heart gets to Jesus, the better this life is. You might not want to accept it or understand it, but it's so true. It is just so true because living in the world's way, you're never happy. You're never satisfied. You get something to eat, you get hungry later. And it's more than just that. When you smoke a joint or whatever, you want to smoke another joint. Or when you want to do a drug, you do another drug. But see, when you really have Jesus in your heart, you don't need that because the high, it's, I know it's going to sound strange, but when you get the Holy Spirit in you, the way that you're so filled with joy and happiness and peace and contentment, no other drug can compare to it. Well, you know, we talk about peace and joy and happiness and contentment. That's one thing. I have found that uh, by having hands and feet ministry in my life, and having a relationship with Christ and knowing who I am as a human being a lot of people don't know who they are they're, they're so confused man they're lost and it's true and it took me a long time to really figure out you know who I who am I as a person what what, what, what do I want to do in my life really it took me 54 years to finally understand my purpose and that's hands and feet before I, w I would deal with the despair or, uh, and grief I would go to narcotics and this has helped me having this ministry family to where I don't need narcotics Jesus even though I have that emptiness inside me from the loss of my my love I know that Christ's love is there and I know she's in the arms of Jesus and I know that I will be there with her when I go to heaven and I will depart from this world and just knowing that gives me strength strength and courage to pick yourself up and go forward and be embrace who you're going to meet embrace what, who you're going to run into and what's going to happen next and what door God is going to open and, and, and it opens your eyes to the signs that God drops in your lap. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Do you, do you have some personal experiences where you've seen Christ paving your path? Yes, I, I do. Uh, I guess it's by the people I've met up here and by when I didn't have a place to stay, people offered me their apartment to stay in for a little while, so I'm able to get some comfort. But the most important thing is... Kindness. It's kindness, yes. The kindness and love is... You know, it's, sometimes it seems like there's more kindness in the people that are here than the people that are out in the other world. They truly show they care. Mm -hmm. And you know, it doesn't take much to care. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard for a lot of people because I feel a lot of people deep down don't care about themselves. How could they even care about other people? You know, but here, even the ones that are most broken show you they care. And that's the beauty mm -hmm. of what I don't see and I've never seen in any other church ever. You know, yeah, they'll yeah. shake your hand and, you know, everybody will stand up and, you know, hug each other. But, you know what, if I'm homeless and I'm hungry, would that person even care? Would they, are they a true Christian? That's why I don't like to have a label that I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm a follower of Christ. The teachings of Christ. I'm trying to walk the walk of Jesus Christ when he was here for 33 years. You know, that's a short lifespan. I know, it, it is. My, my, my wife, Brittany, died at 32. Mm. 
And her sacrifice has had a snowball effect on people. It's affected people on the street, the girls out there, because she was an addict and she was a lot of girls, or, uh, several of them went and got detox and into rehab. It's affected the family. It's, it's snowballed. And now I find myself in the political arena with having to get the Britney Act in place to help seal cracks because she was thrown through the cracks in the system. But her sacrifice and her death and her departure has left an imprint here. And I want to create the Brittany Withers Wall. And I'm having people send in photographs of people that they've lost loved ones through drug overdose. These people are being forgotten. You know, there's addicts here. And there's been people here that I've met that are no longer here. They're in heaven. Mm -hmm. Big Donnie Moore, Ronald Bell, and several people. It's a, it's a revolving door, man. We're never promised tomorrow. But I tell you what upsets me is this whole thing on drugs. And a lot of these people that have died and passed away are being shoved under the rug and forgotten. And with the Britney's Love Organization, which that's bringing Honor Veterans Radio, Hands and Feet Foundation, American Hearts Radio Entertainment Network, and we want more corporate sponsorship and support to where we can create this wall and have all these faces etched in this marble wall with their memory that they'll never be forgotten. And we'll take this wall worldwide. It's mentioned twice the word withers, Brimmy Withers was your last name in the Bible, in Psalms and Isaiah. And I posted that on the Britney's Love Organization on Facebook. So please support it. And if you have anybody that you've lost, loved ones, feel free to, to put their photo and memory up there. We're going to make sure that they're never forgotten. And the reason I bring that up here is because Hands and Feet Foundation gives you that feeling that you're not forgotten. That it does. You know, and I know you've been out here on the street for almost a year now, right? Well, it's been about four months now, going on four and a half months. August, September, October, mm -hmm. November. Yeah. So four months out here on the street. So I'm, I met you right when you were just, mm -hmm. you became homeless. Yeah, the first day, I think. Yep. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, man, I'm so glad that I met you, and your story is compelling, and I know that uh, you're, you're looking better every time I see you. Yes, I was very sick. And uh, I thank the Lord for you, Kent. Well, thank you. I thank the Lord for you, Mike. Is there anything you'd like to say to your, all of our viewers out here? Yes, I would. I would like to give you this opportunity to let you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You have to believe in your heart and speak with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and that he was risen from the dead on the third day and now sits at the right hand of God making intercession for us. Your heart has to be close to Jesus. You can have head knowledge of him, but that's not enough. Get your heart close to Jesus because that's all that matters. See, this is what God is doing. God is recording our brain waves. So on Judgment Day, he will play back what we th our thought process as well as what we say. That's why it says in the Bible, unsaved shall condemn themselves. And see, if you're not written in the book, Lambs of Life, you don't stand a chance. And that's what's so important. You see, our soul is priceless. We're not promised tomorrow. And this lifespan is only a puff of smoke compared to eternity. And it's hard for man to comprehend eternity. But remember, eternity never ends. Never ends. You have two choices. And if you're not for Jesus, you are against Jesus. There is no middle ground. You either can spend eternity in heaven with Jesus and God, or spend eternity in hell with Satan, in the lake of fire, where the fire is not crunched and the worm dieth not. I tell you, man, um, that's some heavy words, and uh, it reminds me of the shortest verse in the Bible, which you know what that is, right? Jesus wept. You don't have to feel alone. Jesus is right there. All you gotta do is talk to him, acknowledge him, bring him into your heart. Say, Lord, help me love myself again. You know, 
Because it's all about love, baby. I tell you what, love is the most powerful force in the universe. It uh, is. It is. And that's what this Hands and Feet Foundation is. It's a foundation of love. And the Brittany Withers Act legislation we're going to get put so we get policies changed. First thing is, Brittany was turned away from gateway rehabilitation oh. because she had wounds on her face. That devastated her after she surrendered to get help. Mm -hmm. Nobody should be turned away for any reason for help. No. The second topic Brittany Act is going to stand for is substituting one drug for another and getting people into rehab on a whole different drug that's even harder to kick than heroin and cocaine. The third thing is, there's seven topics, but the main three is the wounds, substitution of one drug for another, and the third one is we got to crack down and have stiffer penalties on these drug dealers out here pushing this poison and killing God's children. I'm all for no bond for any drug dealer. And once they're convicted, capital punishment. My name is Mike Aloya. This is Kent Weaver. I want to say thank you for tuning in. Yes. Go to American Hearts Radio Facebook pages. There's multiple group pages. And go to the Hands and Feet Foundation.org. Support them, donate to them. Check out the Britney's Love Organization. We're on a mission from God. We'll see you next time. Rock and roll. Love you, man. Love you, Mike. <laughs>